Hello everybody, my name is Lorraine. I'm from Canada. I have a Verbling class for you today at the intermediate level. This class is called Being Tactful and we're going to look at the kinds of softening words that you can use when you're trying to be very polite in situations and um, you want to be able to speak in a very soft and polite way. I'll say hi to people as they join us here in the classroom and so far we have Viviana. Hi, how are you doing today? Hi Lorraine. Yeah, pretty good. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Glad to see you. It's an interesting picture you have on your icon. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> she has lightning in her eyes. Lightning yeah. strikes. <laughs> yeah. Remind me, where are you from, Viviana? Okay, um, I'm from Colombia. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you live in Colombia? Yeah, uh, I live in Colombia in the capital, in Bogota. Oh, in Bogota. I'll have to visit Bogota one day. Yeah. I hear it's a very, very nice city. Yeah, yeah. It's like a business um, city and the weather is not so good, but it is, it's good if you want to... Um, I mean, come here and study or work in a big, big company is the best place in Colombia. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. You say the weather is not good in, in Bogota? I mean, if I compare with Canada, I think it's good for you. But for, <laughs> for Latin American people, it's, it's cold. <laughs> okay, so what is the average temperature in Bogota in, say, about, January? Uh, in January, I mean, we don't have seasons, so mm. uh, all year is um, about uh, 11 and 17 degrees normally. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do you have uh, Do you have rainy season? Yeah. For example, this month it, it rains every day. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. The last week. It rained every day. But does it rain all day or just for maybe an hour or two? Uh, sometimes two hours, sometimes three. Uh, it changes. Um, mm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Abimelech, hi, welcome. Thanks for following me. Hello. <laughs> nice okay. to see you again. It's good to see you. I'm glad you came to the class. All right, so I'm going to get started even though there aren't many people in the class. Uh, I have posted the worksheet in Verbling chat. I'm going to post it in Google chat so you can download it and refer to it if you need to. And um, I'm also going to share my screen share with you. If you click on my icon at the bottom of the page, you will keep this blue screen as your main screen for the whole class. Okay. If you can't see the blue screen, please let me know. And Nunta has just joined us. Hi, Nunta. How are you doing today? How are you doing, Nunta? Hello. Welcome to the class. Hello, Tisha. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Okay, so we're just getting started with the material. This is about being tactful. Okay, and we also have Sergio with us. Hi, Sergio. Hi, Teacher Lauren. Hi, everyone. I'm good. How, are how, are you? You, how are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Good. How are you? Okay. We're going to get started. Um, we're going to describe words and actions. We have these adjectives on the screen. They're in green. We're going to put them into their correct categories. So some of these mean they cause offense and the other ones um, cause no offense, okay, not causing offense. 
Uh, we're going to start with Abimelech. And hi, Sam. Welcome to the class. Abimelech, the first word is tactful. Which of these categories would tactful be in? Not cousin. Uh, sorry, sorry I, I don't understand the meaning of tactful. Okay. Tactful means that you say things in such a way that it doesn't make the other person feel bad. So you could say, for instance, you look at a person and you say, hmm, you're fat. This is not tactful. If you say, um, she's mm, generously endowed, <laughs> it's a little more tactful. It kind of means the same thing, but it doesn't sound as bad. Uh, then it will be in causing offense. So tactful is the opposite of causing offense. It is not causing offense. Tactful. Okay, uh, Nunta? The next word is offensive. Offensive. Mm, uh, uh, sorry, I, I don't know. Okay. If something is expensive, is it a lot of money or a little money? Mm -hmm. The word expensive. I'm trying to show you. Uh, Nunta? Yeah. If something is expensive. Something is it? Is a lot of money, it costs a lot of money, or it doesn't cost a lot of money? Do you know which? I don't understand, Tisha. Okay. Do you see in group chat? Group. Hmm. Okay. In group chat? Group chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, I... I with, okay, expensive. Yeah, I yes. see expensive. See the word? Okay, expensive. Is is this mean it costs a lot of money, or it does a lot not? Of money. A lot of money. Okay, so it costs a lot of money if it is expensive. You see the if on the end. Now on our screen share. If something is offensive, is it a lot of offense or not much offense? Mm. My heart died. I'm sorry, I, I'm not easy to understand. Okay, I'll go on to somebody else and see yeah. if you can watch and learn, okay? Okay, 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 teacher. Okay, so Sergio, offensive. Offensive, cause offense. Yes, causing offense. When something has I-V-E on the end, it means it's a lot of. It's expensive, it means it's a lot of money. It's offensive. It means it's causing a lot of offense. Okay, good. Uh, some, the next one is rude. A word, a word is not causing offensive. It's not? not rude. When it's rude. rude, that person is rude. The person is rude is uh, just uh, his behavior. It's yes. Right. Yeah, oh. Exactly. It causes offense. offense. Does everybody understand offense? Offense, you say some criminal. Um, it, it's not necessarily criminal, although criminal can be an offense. But this just means something that makes another person feel bad. Oh. Okay, oh. it's... it's it can be an offense, something that you have done wrong. Oh, oh. Okay. And when you're rude, 
this causes offense. It makes somebody feel bad. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Viviana, what about yeah. diplomatic? Diplomatic, uh, not right. causing of offense. Right, it's not causing offense. If you're being diplomatic, it means you are trying to um, say something in a way that won't hurt the feelings of another person. Uh, Abimelech, what about the word subtle? Causes offense uh, or doesn't? Subtle means, uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't cause offense. It I think. doesn't uh, cause offense, yes. When something is subtle, it means that it's very understated. It's... Um, Something not said very loudly necessarily. It's subtle. Okay, uh, Nunta, personal. If you ask people personal questions, does this cause offense or not cause offense? Personal. Yeah, you ask personal things like, how much money do you make? Or, how old are you? These are personal questions. Uh, it is not cause, causing offense. Yeah, it causes offense. You should never ask personal questions like, how much money do you make? Mm -hmm. um, Sergio. Yes. The next one. Civil. Uh, defi definitely not cause of offense. Exactly. Civil. It Civil. means that you don't start yelling and screaming at people. Yeah. Being civil. Good. Some, what about vulgar? Vulgar. Vulgar is um, impolite. Yes. Uh, it should be causing uh, offense. Yeah, exactly. So if you are using vulgar language, it usually means you are using words that are considered swear words. And that's what we call vulgar language, swear words. Vulgar. Vulgar is sound like uh, a kind of um, wine from Russia. Vulgar. I'm sorry, could you repeat, please? Uh, vulgar, the sound like uh, a wire from Russia. Vulgar. Oh, like, okay, it sounds like it's from Russia. Yeah. A word from Russia. Okay, yeah, I can see how you might think that. Um, Viviana, the next yeah. word is blunt. Blunt, a uh, causing offense. Yes, if you're blunt, it means you're telling it like it is. You're fat. That's blunt, uh, and it's very impolite. Can I can I say direct? Or direct is just yes. Direct okay. and blunt are synonyms. Okay. Yeah, they mean pretty much the same thing. Good. Abimelech. Respectful. Uh, respect. Respectful uh, doesn't cause offense. Yeah, if you're being respectful, you don't cause offense. Nunta, polite. Uh huh, hello. Hello. Yes, can you I'm do polite? Does this cause offense or not cause offense? I think, okay, not. Not, yes, this is right. Polite, when you're polite. And then, of course, we have the opposite, Sergio, impolite. Um, impolite is causing offense. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, and some politically correct. This is all one one phrase, politically correct. Uh, correct. This is, it's a lot causing offense. 
Exactly. Now, can anybody tell me what is meant by politically correct? What does this mean? Uh, it's um, the right direction. Mm, when, you, when you follow the rules or the law or something like that, you don't break the law. Okay, uh, that's close. Politically correct is something that is relatively new. This is language that does not offend different groups, whether it be religious groups or racial groups or um, males and females. So in my country, here in Canada and in the United States, they've been trying to find language that is inclusive. So instead of saying, for instance, fireman, because fireman includes the word man and it doesn't include the word woman. So instead of saying fireman, firewoman, which um, shows two sides, they say firefighter. And in that word, it doesn't tell you whether it is male or female. Neutral. Neutral, yes, very neutral. And that's what politically correct is all about, trying to find that neutral word that doesn't set apart one kind of person from another. So we try to, um, oh, there's all kinds of words like that. Instead of saying mailman, we say uh, mail delivery person. <laughs> Not chairman, it's chairperson. So this is politically correct. This is what is meant by this phrase. Are there any questions about any of these words? Alright, so we have a dialogue here. I'm going to get everybody to uh, read this dialogue. Uh, uh, we'll do it in pairs. So we'll start with uh, Abimelech and... Uh, oh, Mikkel, hi, welcome. Hi, Loren. Nice, nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you as well. Okay, so I'm going to get the two of you to read. Uh, Abimelech, you can be the shop assistant. And uh, Mikkel, be the customer, please. Thank you. Uh, can I help you? Yes, my friend. Bought this here for me yesterday, but I don't like it. Would you like to choose another one, sir? No, I want a refund. Res sorry, I want a refund. I don't know. Refund. Refund. Refund, thank you. We do have some new colors in stock. No, just give me the money. Okay, no problem. Do you have the, uh, the receipt? Yes, take it. Okay, good, thank you. All right. Now, Nunta and Sergio, you're going to do the same dialogue. Um, Mikhail, can you please mute your microphone? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so Nunta, you be the shop assistant, and Sergio, the customer. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, teacher. Can I hear you? Yes, my friend bought this shirt for me yesterday, but I don't like it. Would you like to choose another one, sir? No, I want a refund. We do have some new color in stock. No. Uh, okay. Just give me their money. Okay, no problem. Do you have the receipt? Yes, take it. Okay, good, thank you. All right, Sum and Viviana. Sum, you can be the shop assistant. Viviana, the customer. Sam, are you there? Yeah, yes, I'm here. Um, okay, good. Okay, can I help you? 
yes, my friend bought this shirt for me yesterday, but I don't like it. Uh, would you like to uh, choose another one, uh, Miss? No, I want a refund. Well, uh, we do have some new colors in stock. No, just give me the money. Uh, mm, okay, no problem. You have the receipt? Yes, take it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now think about the way the shop assistant spoke. Would you say that the shop assistant was polite and respectful? Yeah. Or not? What does everybody think? It's polite because uh, the sub assistant say we don't like would you? Okay, uh, yeah. Uses would you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, any other comments about the shop assistant? Anyone? Uh, the shop assistant uh, gave uh, the customer other choice, like uh, new colors in the stock, so he tried to yeah, collaborate the customer. Yeah, okay, so he tried to engage the customer to find out why the customer wants to return the shirt, uh, gave him all kinds of options, and the customer chose none of them and that's fine. What do you think about the customer? This is a question for anyone. What do you think about his language? Nice guy? <laughs> he's very no, he's very rude. <laughs> yeah, he's quite rude. So what's some of the language that just doesn't sound very diplomatic, doesn't sound very nice that the customer said? This is for anyone. Uh, number, number two, no, I want a refund. Okay, but shouldn't you ask? If you want a refund, you want a refund. So well, is there a way he could have said that better? I would yeah, like... Example, I would like uh, a refund or use other, for example, good or could you please give me my refund or... Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing where you you don't use just blunt language. No, I want a refund. What other things does the customer say that could have been more diplomatic? Uh, Sergio, what do you think? Well, I think I, I should use... Uh, uh, please, uh, could you help me? I if you don't mind, I would like yeah. a favor. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Lots of really good uh, tactful kinds of language. Okay, so this next time we're going to have, uh, let's see, I want Nunta to be the shop assistant. And who would like to volunteer to be the customer but a more polite version? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, Nunta, you're going to be the shop assistant, and Sergio, you're going to be a more polite customer. Go ahead. Nunta. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I think, again, please. Yes. Please just read the please. shop assistant part. Read for shop assistant. Can I help you? I love you. I, I read again. Yes, read again, please. Uh -huh, okay. Can I hear you? Yes, sure. Uh, I would like uh, to. Uh, uh, my, my friend bought this shirt yesterday for me, but unfortunately, I don't like this color. Uh, if you don't mind, you can help me to change this or maybe reform. Okay, so Sergio, what I want you to do is uh, keep the sentences that are there, but, ah, but you just, know, where he says, yeah, just change it so that this sentence is not as harsh. 
Okay, okay, I got it. Ah, oh, yes, my friend bought this shirt, shirt for me yesterday. But unfortunately, I don't like it. Okay, good. Ninta, would, would you like to choose another one, sir? Uh, if you don't mind, uh, I would like to be refound. Ninta? We 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 do have some new colors in stock. Uh, yes, this is um, maybe a good idea. But um, again, I I'm not be rude. Could you uh, give me uh, maybe help me with phone? Ninta. Okay, no problem. Do you have the receipt? Yes, here it is. Okay. All right. Good. Nice attempt. Very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Viviana, could you be the shop assistant, please? And Abimelech, I'd like you to try being a more polite customer. Okay. Okay. Can I help you? Uh, yes, please. Uh, my friend bought this shirt for me yesterday, but uh, it doesn't fit to me. Okay. Would you like to choose another one, sir? Uh, sorry, uh, I, I would like a refund instead. We don't have, uh, we do have some new colors in the stock. Uh, sorry, but uh, I would prefer, uh, I, I would prefer a refund. Okay, no problem. Do you have the receipt? Uh, yes, here it is. Okay, good. All right, so one of the words that I've noticed so far, nobody is using, and they're really, really simple, common words in English that make such a difference. Um, English children are taught these pretty much as you know their first words after mama and papa and that is please and thank you so try to use lots of pleases and thank yous so for instance when the customer says no I want a refund the customer could say mm, no thank you um, I want a refund um, and then again, he says, no, just give me the money. Uh, so the shop said, we do have some new colors in stock. He says, no, thank you. Um, I, I just prefer the money. Okay, so making the thank you in there um, makes a big difference to how it sounds. And when the customer says, uh, yes, if you could say, yes, of course. Here it is. Uh, I think Abimelech said, here it is. That's much better than take it. Uh, take it is a, a command. Take it. Here it is is an offering. So there's a difference between a command and an offering. Yes, Sam, you have something to say? Uh, yeah, I want to ask um, the two words in the chat. Even. We is the same pronunciation. We even we. I I'm sorry. Can you write in the chat the words you're talking about in Google Chat? Oh, Google Chat. Okay. Uh -huh. Even we. Refund. Yeah. Okay, because refund is both a noun and a verb. Oh. If you are talking about a verb, I'm going to refund the money, then the stress is on the last part of the word. So, uh, um, oh. refund. If you want a refund, 
the refund is a noun. Okay, so the noun sounds like like we re we not we we is a w sound oh. well this is a er uh. not a not a w uh. er uh. refund refund good uh. yes Re refund oh. Mm -hmm. oh thank you all right so the word is spelled the same but when the stress is on the end of the word the last syllable it's the verb if it's on the beginning syllable it's the noun in this case a refund is a noun meaning I want money alright good so let's uh, continue so here are some other possibilities according to the key this phrase, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, does not mean in this context that you fear something. It is a way to, to describe that you feel bad, but you have to do something different. I'm afraid. It doesn't suit me. So he's saying, I don't like it. Um, this is not the kind of shirt I normally wear and so here's the no thank you no thank you I would like is better than saying want would like is softer these are softening phrases and then tax please on the end and then uh, prefer is a good word again just give me this is a command. Give me the money. What you want to do is state a preference. This does not make a demand of the other person. It's stating your own preference. I really would prefer a refund. And then, of course, at the end, yes, of course, here it is. Or, yeah, that's the best way. Okay, so... Let's go on. No, no, uh, one, yes. Mm -hmm. One question. Can you go back? Uh, yep. Oops, sorry. In the SOBA system, we do have some new color. I don't, under, I don't understand the use uh, do in this trade. We do have, we have it, no correct? Yeah, okay. It's a good question. Um, this is do used for emphasis. So um, the shop assistant is trying to figure out why the customer is returning the shirt. So um, she first of all, you know, do you want to try another one? No. Well, we do have some new colors. This means. Um, How can I put it? If if the if the customer had said, "Do you have some more colors?" the shop assistant would answer, "Yes, we do." So um, the shop assistant is sort of answering an unstated question because the shop assistant is trying to figure out what the customer wants. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> okay. All right, good. I hope it was clear. The trouble with explanations is sometimes they go on too long. And I apologize. All right, so we have a listening to do here. We're going to listen to uh, six dialogues. And they are of customers trying to, um, well, actually, not necessarily customers, just people talking to one another 
and listen for the language. We're going to be looking for these things. Which one makes a complaint? Which one interrupts a meeting? Which one speaks his or her mind? Makes a request. Okay, so look for all of these in the listenings. We'll hear it twice and then we'll try to answer the questions. Dialogue 1. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I bought a digital camera from your website. Okay, is there a problem? Well, yes. It looks like you sent me the wrong camera. As you can see from the order confirmation, I didn't order this model. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. We'll replace it immediately. Dialogue 2. Excuse me, could you make a little less noise, please? I'm trying to sleep. Okay, sorry. We'll turn the music down. Thank you. Dialogue 3. You were looking for me, Mark. Yes, that's right. I seem to have misplaced my textbook, and I have a lecture in 30 minutes. I was wondering if I could borrow your copy. Okay, I can lend you mine for the day, but I'll need it back by 5 o'clock. Dialogue 4. Come in. Hi, Mr. Johnson. I don't mean to disturb you, but could I have a quick word? Couldn't this wait till later? I've got a meeting on at the moment. Well, unfortunately, that isn't really possible. I'm leaving for Paris this afternoon. I'll only be a minute, I promise. Oh, OK, then. Dialogue 5. Mark, I've decided. I'm going to take my driving test next week. Next week? Don't you think you need a bit more time? What do you mean? Well, I don't mean to be rude, but uh, I've seen your driving. You're just not ready yet. Dialogue 6. Hello? Hello, this is Mark from Flat 14. I'm calling about the shower in my bathroom. It seems to be leaking. Oh, really? I'll send the plumber around tomorrow afternoon. I'm afraid of going away tomorrow afternoon for a few days. Would it be possible to send someone around to fix it later today? Okay. I'll call the plumber and get back to you in an hour. Thank you. I'll be waiting. All right. So we're going to listen one more time and then answer the questions. Dialogue 1. Can I help you, sir? Yes. I bought a digital camera from your website. Okay. Is there a problem? Well, yes. It looks like you sent me the wrong camera. As you can see from the order confirmation, I didn't order this model. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. We'll replace it immediately. Dialogue 2. Excuse me, could you make a little less noise, please? I'm trying to sleep. OK, sorry. We'll turn the music down. Thank you. Dialogue 3. You were looking for me, Mark. Yes, that's right. I seem to have misplaced my textbook, and I have a lecture in 30 minutes. I was wondering if I could borrow your copy. OK, I can lend you mine for the day, but I'll need it back by 5 o'clock. Dialogue 4. Come in. Hi, Mr. Johnson. I don't mean to disturb you, but could I have a quick word? Couldn't this wait till later? I've got a meeting on at the moment. Well, unfortunately, that isn't really possible. I'm leaving for Paris this afternoon. I'll only be a minute, I promise. Oh, OK, then. Dialogue 5. Mark, I've decided. I'm going to take my driving test next week. Next week? Don't you think you need a bit more time? What do you mean? Well, I don't mean to be rude, but uh, I've seen your driving. You're just not ready yet. <laughs> Dialogue 6. Hello? Hello, this is Mark from Flat 14. I'm calling about the shower in my bathroom. It seems to be leaking. Oh, really? I'll send the plumber around tomorrow afternoon. I'm afraid of going away tomorrow afternoon for a few days. Would it be possible to send someone around to fix it later today? OK. I'll call the plumber and get back to you in an hour. Thank you. I'll be waiting. All right. So, number one, make a complaint. Uh, which dialogue was it, Viviana? A number one. Yeah, number one was number one. Good. Some, which one was interrupting a meeting? 
um, uh, lumber fee guitar on. Number three? Um, maybe number four. Yeah, I think it was number four. Yeah. Number four, yeah. Okay, Sergio, what about speaks his or her mind? Which one was that? Number three, right? Speak his mind. Oh, number five? Yeah, number five. That was the one about the driving test. <laughs> okay, Nunta makes a request to a friend. Ninta, are you there? Yeah. Do you know which one was making a request to a friend? Um, okay, sorry, teacher. I not easy to understand. <laughs> Listen. That's I okay. No, that. that's all right. Not a problem. Okay, we'll try. Um, Mikhail? <clears throat> I don't remember because it's possible. I made number three I don't know I remember okay do you remember what it was about yes it's about the, the noise because it's very low and was that making a request to a friend yeah yes yeah, because uh, uh, she tell him is very low the noise and you uh, uh, if you want to 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 put uh, to put down, no, to put down, or mm -hmm. yes, you you heard it right and you understood it, but that was making a request to a stranger. That was in another apartment or flat, and she knocked on the door to ask them to turn down the music. But that was not to a friend. That was to a stranger. <laughs> Does anybody remember what the request was to a friend? What was the situation? Ask book. Yeah, the book. He, he forgot his textbooks, so he asked his friend for the textbook, and that was number three. Yeah. And then you were right, the one about knocking on the, the stranger's door. That was number two. And the last one, Abimelech, which is an easy one. <laughs> Who had a problem that needed urgent attention. Yeah, number six. Number six. And what was the situation? What was the problem? Uh, le leaking on the shower. Yeah, a leaky shower. Exactly. Good. Well done. All right. So we have some useful expressions here we're going to put into categories. The first category, uh, let's get Viviana to read this in blue, or in white actually. A word or phrase used to soften an adjective, verb, or adverb. Okay, thank you. Some read the next one. Well, yeah, a negative question. Uh, used to politically disagree or argue with someone. Okay, so this word here is politely. Politely. Oh. <laughs> politely, yeah. Good, yes, good. Nunta, can you read this one? A, a politely quest. Good, okay. And Mikhail? As, sorry, a softening phrase used to introduce a problem, complain, neg or, uh, sorry, negative remark. Okay, good. Now this word, I'm going to write it in the uh, group chat. When we say this word, soften, we have a silent T in the word. We do pronounce the T when we say the word soft, but as soon as we put the EN on the end of it, it becomes soften. We don't actually hear the T. So just 
just to re remind you, and this word, soften. No T. Okay. So, let's see. How do I have this go? Um, I think we look at the words at the top. It seems to be. What column would we put that in? Seems to be. Uh, let's start with uh, Sergio. Okay. Seems to be a soften phrase used to introduce problems, innovative word of phrase used to soften an adjective. Uh, the color and one, or maybe the third one, two, three, a polite request. So we heard this in the dialogue when the guy had a camera. That was the wrong one. It seems to be you <laughs> sent me the wrong one. There seems to be a problem. It's a polite request? Um. A request is something... Oh, no, no, no. It is a negative question used to polite. Uh, a negative question has not in it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably going to either be yeah, this one, one or this one, <laughs> the fourth yeah. one. All right, so let's see. It's in the fourth one. That's what I had thought. So this is used to introduce a problem or a complaint. Uh, so you go up to the sales clerk and you say, there seems to be a problem with my order. Instead of saying, you messed up on my order. <laughs> there seems to be a problem. It makes it much softer. Okay. And uh, let's see. I think the next one is, could you? I don't know whether I go down the column. Let me try. Let me see what happens. Okay, so we're going across. Could you? is a polite request. You know, uh, could you stamp my book for me, please? Could you turn off the water? It's a polite request for something. Um, Nunta, what about this next one? Couldn't this wait till later? Which of these columns should that go in? Could not this work too later? I think a polite request. It is very polite, but this is a special one because it's using not in it. No. Could not this no. wait till later? Couldn't this wait till later? Mm. Uh, when you use not, it means it's in the negative. Negative question. Yeah. So it's a okay. negative question used to politely okay. disagree okay. or argue with someone. Okay. Just this. Okay. So. Okay, teacher. All right. And the next one is, don't you think, Abimelech? Uh, don't you think a neg negative question used yeah, to politely negative. disagree? Or... Good. And I don't mean to be rude, but, Mikkel? Uh, sorry, <clears throat> so we need to put this sentence. Ah, okay, okay. I don't mind to be rude, but um, this is a uh, 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 fair a word of phrase used to soften, soften an adjective. Hmm. But what's the adjective, or verb, or adverb? Be, be rude, no? I don't mean to be rude, but whenever we have a but, 
it means that we're going to make a statement about something, either a complaint or a problem or a negative remark. This was used about the girl who was going to go for her driver's test. I don't mean to be rude, but I've seen your driving. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this a negative question? No, it's not a question. Uh, no, no, no. It's not I a don't, question. I don't mean the 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 last a softening a softening thing. Yeah. So this is the last one. It's used to introduce a problem, complaint, or a negative remark. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Um. Let's see. Some. I don't mean to disturb you, but. No. A softening phrase used to introduce a problem, complaint, yeah, negative remark. Exactly. Good. Uh, Viviana, uh, I seem to have. The first one. A word or phrase used to soften an adjective, verb, or an adverb. Okay. I think you're right. I think this is wrong. I think it should go over here. Yeah, yeah, because it's yeah. a verb. Yeah, I agree. It should have been over here. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was wondering if I could. Abimelech. Uh, a softening phrase? Mm hmm. Oops, what happened to? I went down instead of across. Okay, I'm afraid. All right, I was wondering if I could. No, nope. all right, we've missed that one altogether. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it looks like. Would it be possible to? Let's try that one. Um, Abimelech again. Uh, this is a negative question. Would it be possible? Is it negative? Yes. Where's the negative part? Uh, because uh, would 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 is uh, would is start stop start of the question uh, sentence. Yeah, it's not negative because you use would. Negative sentences have not in it somewhere. For instance, if you said, wouldn't it be possible to, that's a negative question. Wouldn't it? But this is, would it okay. be possible uh, to? A polite request. Yeah, a yeah. polite request. Polite. Good. Ah, oh, it is a polite request. <laughs> <laughs> I did this one a long time ago, and yeah, I did a lot of them wrong. <laughs> okay, uh, what's next? I've got it looks like. So a bit, a bit. Um, Sergio. A bit. Um, a word or phrase used to soften an adjective, verb, or adverb. Exactly, yeah. And Nunta? A little. A little. A little. A little. I think a word of phrase is used something. Yes, it's the same as a bit, a little. Yeah. Good. All right. And then uh, the last one, uh, Viviana. Really? Yeah, really. Um, I think it's the last one, maybe, to introduce a problem. I, I really don't like to, or I really. I yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I really don't like. Uh, it's like I don't mean to disturb you. I really don't want to bother you but yeah, yeah. Um, 
It also could be a word or phrase used to soften. But let's see what my, yeah, I put it over here. But uh, yeah, I think in either case, it could be either one of them. All right. These are all useful expressions. We went really very slowly in this one. <laughs> We're almost done our hour, and I'm nowhere near finished. Uh, let's see if we can really quickly put the, um, the expressions on the line. These are the dialogues that we heard. And uh, let's see if we can figure out what goes on the lines, at least for the first couple. Um, Mikhail, the first one is Mark says, well, yes, something, you sent me the wrong camera. Do you remember what he said? <laughs> the problem was, yes, yes, uh, Yes, but I don't. I don't remember the the words. It looks like yes. I think it might be that one. It looks like you sent me the wrong camera. Yes, yes. No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, Abimelech, in dialogue two, do you remember what the expression that would go on this line? Uh, excuse me, could you, uh, I think, could you make a little less noisy? Yeah, that sounds very close. Could you? Could you make a little less noise? Good. All right. Uh, Sergio, try what Mark says here. Okay. You, yes, that's right. Do you mind this place, my... Okay, I'm going to go back to the uh, screen that has the. Could you? Do you see this one? Yes, I see him. To have. To have. Booked. Uh, so I seem to have misplaced my textbook. Uh, misplaced. Yeah. Yes. Good. Some. The next line. Oh, I have a lecture. A lecture in thirty minutes. Mm. Uh, would you pour? Uh, uh, may I borrow your copy? Okay, may I borrow your copy is a good thing to say. I'm not sure he said may I, but that works. I was wondering if I could is another way to say it. Oh. It's a little longer kind oh. of way. But what you said, uh, some, is perfectly fine. May I is very polite. May I borrow your copy. That's good. Okay, unfortunately our hour is up. And I thank everybody for joining me for this lesson. And I hope to see you soon in another lesson, maybe on Tuesday or Wednesday. Anyway, we'll see you later. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.